Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Now in this video I am going to discuss the topic addition of coherent and incoherent waves. Now this concept is based on principle of superposition of waves. So first let us see principle of superposition of waves. So now according to this principle, now suppose this is a particle in the medium and through this particle this is a wave passing through this particle and by virtue of this wave the displacement produced in this particle it is suppose some y1 okay and for some other wave the displacement is y2 okay then the resultant displacement of this particle due to superposition of these two waves will be the vector sum of these the two individual waves y1 plus y2 okay so the resultant displacement of this particle is the vector sum of the displacement produced by the individual waves okay so this is principle of superposition of waves now let us see how this principle of superposition of waves leads to addition of waves when the waves are coherent and incoherent okay now consider two sources s1 and s2 now waves from these two sources are reaching point p okay now so these are the waves okay and uh, let us say s1 p is equal to s2 p okay so there is no path difference this and uh, the displacement of the wave displacement equation of the wave emitted from s1 it is y1 is equal to a cos omega t okay so this is the displacement produced by the wave emitted by s1 to p on a particle okay now similarly for wave propagating from s2 towards p y2 is equal to a cos omega t so now if i apply principle of superposition okay now this will lead to y is equal to y1 plus y2 okay so that is y is equal to twice a cos omega t okay now this is the displacement equation of the resultant wave okay now we know that intensity is proportional to amplitude square okay now for this displacement equation this term is the amplitude so that means intensity of the resultant wave it is proportional to 4a square okay now if for this wave the amplitude was a okay so corresponding to this a if the intensity is i naught so in that case this is 4a square so this i will be equal to 4 i naught okay so intensity will be four times okay so this is the case when the path difference is zero and we are getting maximum intensity now this is the condition this is the maximum intensity and this is called constructive interference constructive interference so this is the case when the path difference of the two waves emitted from s1 to p and s2 to p is zero there is no path difference s1 p is equal to s2 p next let us see when the path difference is 2 lambda then what happens now s1 and s2 are the two sources and we are going to study the displacement produced at this point q okay so suppose waves are emitted from this s1 waves are also emitted from s2 okay now let us say this is 7 lambda and this is 9 lambda okay so there are 9 waves and this is 7 waves so the path difference between these two is 2 lambda okay so now the path difference is 2 lambda path difference 2 lambda okay now see this is the wave this is 0 this is lambda okay uh, this is 0 phase difference is this is 0 this is pi this is twice pi so that means a part difference of lambda is equivalent to phase difference of twice pi so that means a part difference of twice lambda will bring a phase difference of 4 pi okay this 2 pi will bring a phase difference of 4 pi now if y the displacement equation of this for the wave emitted from s1 if it is y1 is equal to a cos omega t okay in that case y2 will be equal to a cos omega t minus 
4 pi because 4 pi is the phase difference okay so we have y y2 is equal to a cos omega t minus 4 pi okay now what what is this this is equal to a cos omega t okay so now again we are getting the same result so again the resultant displacement is y is equal to twice a cos omega t so resultant intensity is equal to 4 i naught again we are getting constructive interference that is we are getting a maximum intensity okay so this is the case when the part difference is 2 lambda earlier the part difference was 0 okay so 0 now it is 2 lambda okay now let us see what happens when the part difference is say 2.5 lambda then what happens so now we have two sources s1 and s2 okay and we are going to study the displacement produced on this particle at r okay now let's say this is the waves emitted from going from s1 to r and this is from s2 to r okay now suppose this is 9.75 lambda okay and this is 7.25 lambda so what will be the part difference now s1 r minus s2 r so that is equal to how much 2.5 lambda okay so now the part difference is 2.5 lambda okay now to see lambda corresponds to phase difference of twice pi so 2.5 times lambda corresponds to phase difference of 5 pi I multiply both side by 2.5 okay so now what happens if y1 is equal to a cos omega t then in that case y2 is equal to a cos omega t minus 5 pi okay a cos omega t minus 5 pi but what is this this is equal to minus a cos omega t minus a cos omega t y1 is equal to a cos omega t now y2 is equal to minus a cos omega t so now the resultant displacement y is equal to if i add these two i get the resultant displacement y is equal to zero that is destructive interference intensity is zero displacement is zero so this intensity is also zero okay so now we have seen that when the part difference is 2.5 lambda okay or the phase difference is 5 pi okay odd multiple of pi we are getting zero intensity okay when the phase difference was even multiple of pi we were getting maximum intensity so what can be inferred from this let us proceed further we have seen that if s2 p minus s1 p okay this part difference between the two waves this is equal to n lambda n is equal to 0 1 2 and so on then we were getting constructive interference the intensity was maximum okay so the resultant intensity was 4 i naught now next is when s2 p the part difference is n plus half lambda okay where n is equal to 0 1 and 2 and so on as in the case where we have seen when n equal to 2 this is 2 plus half 2.5 lambda the intensity was 0 so resultant intensity was 0 intensity 0 okay so this is destructive interference this is constructive interference when intensity is maximum it is called constructive interference when intensity is zero it is called destructive interference we will see the interference topic in detail how this happens but this is with regard to intensity intensity so at some points intensity is getting maximum at some points intensity is getting minimum okay now next let us identify the condition for this maximum intensity and minimum intensity with respect to the phase difference Now suppose we have two waves having displacement equation y1 is equal to a cos omega t and y2 is equal to a cos omega t plus phi. Okay. 
Now phi is the phase difference between the two waves. Okay. Now the resultant wave formed due to superposition of these two waves will have displacement equation equal to y equal to y1 plus y2. This is principle of superposition of waves. So this is equal to a cos a cos omega t plus a cos omega t plus phi. So this is equal to y is equal to a 2 cos a plus b by 2 omega t plus omega t plus phi by 2 cos omega t minus omega t minus phi by 2. So this is y is equal to twice a. This is omega t minus omega t 0 minus cos minus phi by 2 cos phi by 2. I will take it this side. So this is twice a cos phi by 2 and this is cos omega t minus phi by 2. Okay. So now this is a constant term and this is displacement equal to constant terms cos of this term. So this represents the amplitude of the resultant wave. Okay. So this is y is equal to a cos omega t minus phi by 2 where a is twice a cos phi by 2. Okay. So this is the this is the amplitude of the resultant wave. Now if this is the amplitude of the resultant wave what will be the intensity? Intensity is amplitude square. Okay. So if I square this this is a square so that is i this is 2a this is 4a square okay. but a square is i naught so this is 4i naught cos square phi by 2. So this is the intensity of the resultant wave. So this is the intensity of the resultant wave. So for maximum intensity, see maximum intensity is when i is equal to 4i0. So this term must be equal to plus minus 1. If it is minus 1, it is minus 4i0, but then again its intensity is maximum. So for maximum intensity, this phi value, it will be 0 plus minus 2 pi plus minus 4 pi. Okay. So this is the condition for maximum intensity. Okay. Now similarly for minimum intensity, for minimum intensity, this term needs to be 0. In that case, I will be equal to 0. So for minimum intensity, this phi should be equal to pi plus minus pi plus minus 3 pi plus minus 5 pi and so on. So this is the condition for minimum intensity. Okay. Now let us say what happens if the phase of the incident wave is continuously changing. In that case what happens? Okay. Now see we had this equation resultant intensity i is equal to 4 i naught cos square phi by 2. Okay. Now if the uh, phase of the wave is continuously changing, okay, then what will be the intensity? See in that case, see if the phi, the value of phi is continuously changing, we need to take the average value of this phi and the intensity will be an average intensity. So this, uh, this term is already constant, so I can't, I need to take average on both sides. So the average of this is 4i0 simply because it is constant. So this average value, this i becomes i, this i, so i becomes i average is equal to 4i0 cos square phi by 2 average value of this. This bracket is the symbol for average. So I need to take average value of this. Now average value of cos square phi by 2, it is half. Okay. So that means i average will be equal to twice i0. Okay. I average will be equal to twice i0. So this will be the resultant intensity. That means throughout you will be having intensity as twice i0, uniform intensity everywhere. Okay. Earlier uh, we had this intensity, resultant intensity was 4 i0, 0. Okay. So, but in this case throughout the entire uh, band or entire screen, on the entire screen, on the entire screen you will get uniform intensity of twice i0. Okay. In case the phase is continuously varying. Okay. So, these are the main point of discussion with regard to superposition of waves.
So I hope this video is helpful in clarifying your doubts with regard to the superposition principle. And I have prepared this entire video from your NCRT textbook. So hope you find it beneficial. Now, in case you find it beneficial, do subscribe to my channel. And uh, if possible, you can share this with your other friends. So others, your other friends are also benefited from this video. So my best wishes to you. Good luck.